Hello, hello, and welcome, all you lovely lot. Uh, I am Mari of So Disorganised, and thank you for joining me on my channel, where I love to just chat nonsense about sewing, fabric, and really everything in the sewing community that's going on. So I am on today to do a pattern review. I have done one of these before, and I really, really enjoyed doing it. Um, so I thought I would come on and do a review of the new Chalk and Not Shade dress. So if you haven't seen it, this is their latest pattern, and I'll just get my notes up. Um, but it's basically, it's a full length maxi dress. There are several options. Um, there are several options that you can do. So you can have the option to have a button down front or a zip on the back. You can have, they have an option for big billowy tiered sleeves. Like when I say tiered, it's more like it's got um, like sewn, I don't know what they're called, but like bands across there, but it looks really nice. Um, and yeah, and it comes, the bust, um, not the bust, the bodice comes is, is a fully panelled and lined bodice. And then there's three um, tiered lengths of skirts. So it'd be a really good one if you wanted to maybe make it a bit shorter. You can just omit some of the tiers. Um, but other than that, yeah, you pretty much got as many options as you could possibly want covered for you. And as soon as I saw this um, this pattern released, I really knew that I wanted to make it for an upcoming wedding I had um, as my wedding guest outfit. And I will give you a full disclosure. It took me over a week to make this dress and I didn't even end up wearing it to the wedding. It was finished, it was ready to go, but I ended up wearing a different dress. Not not because I don't absolutely love this, I love this dress so much, but I just felt like it didn't feel quite appropriate. Like, so I don't really, I, I don't really have like the tangible words to describe why I didn't wear it. Um, it just kind of felt a bit like dre the other dress was a better fit and especially with like I couldn't figure out the shoes I wanted to wear with it. So I do love this dress um, but I yeah I just ended up wearing a different one and I will get wear out of this this summer um, but it just kind of it ended up being a bit more casual than um, kind of looking than I intended it to be which isn't a problem actually if anything that's better because now I will you know I won't feel so dressy when I go out to stuff. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed doing my last pattern review. So so that's part of the reason is I'm doing it so soon because I wanted to do that. Another reason is because my sewing room is an absolute tip. It is so messy because I've been sewing, I've been screen printing. And I feel like it was only the other day that I gave it a really big tidy. So I haven't got the emotional, like, just withstanding to bear tidying it so i'm burying my head in the sand i'm ignoring my problems and i'm just not looking that way at my sewing room so i can just pretend that it's tidy and film this video so i don't have to do that um and if i look a bit hot and sweaty well i mean it's because i am but um i did my makeup and got ready this morning so i could get photos of my dress um which i will put in the video so you can see it properly and I kind of got back from the park and then we went to the park. I went, blah, 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 blah. Then I went to the park with the kids. And when I came back, I was really hot. I was a bit flustered um, and my makeup was a bit melted, but I didn't really, I couldn't be bothered to redo it. So I basically done a minor touch up when I said I've like literally just reapplied lipstick and like wiped the smudges. Um, so I look, I might look a bit, you know, grim. I mean, I'm kind of glad that you can't smell me through the camera. I'm sorry, that's, that's probably too much information. That's gross. I can't smell myself, but you know when you feel like you smell? I'm wearing deodorant, I swear. But yeah, so um, TMI, I'm sorry. Oh, oops. But yeah, I've got my, um, my lemon tea, which I'm hoping will just kind of cool me down. And yeah, um, so yeah, I am here to talk you through this dress because I was I really did enjoy making it so I'm just gonna get my notes up um for the sizes there are a few things I would change about it a few things I would do differently and just I just thought I'd talk you through how easy the construction was so I've talked a little about about what it looks like but I will give you the um I'll give you the sizes so the really good thing about this pattern is it does have different bust cups um it has an A to a D cup so um, and I actually, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll talk about this more, a fit more in it, but I am a D cup, um, 
by like you know traditional bra standards but actually in this pattern i my measurements put me at a c cup which i really really liked because i you know obviously if i get bustier i've got you know room to move up and not at the top end of it so i did find that i had to under like undersize my bust um which i said i'm not i'm not sad about because i think that's actually really handy like my boobs kind of go big they go small so yeah it's a really handy thing to have so it comes in sizes um i'll, do, I'll just do the hip measurements because that kind of tends to be where it's at its biggest um 35 inches for size zero to 59 inches for size 30 and that is just the body measurements um because it's like a gathered tiered skirt and it's quite big i I, the bodice i um because i won't go through all the bust cup options because um well there's like four options and a ridiculous amount of sizing but i will link it below so you can look at it but the bodice is really where you got to get the fit right um the skirt just a gathered tiered skirt so you've got a lot of allowance there but yeah i just say make sure you get the bust right that's really where you need to be paying attention to the hips you got a bit of give um, but yeah, so a really good size range. I will stand up and just give you a quick show, but I will put photos in just so you can see it properly because obviously on here, it's not so easy. I'm limited to camera space. So this is it. The fit is really, really nice. Um, there's like a ridiculous amount of buttons on here. But it is a really, really flattering shape. It's, um, yeah, it looks really nice. And like I said, I was quite surprised by actually how casual it looked. So um, I made the sleeveless version. And as soon as I saw the pattern, I knew like all the versions, I, I like the sleeves, but all the versions that I was seeing that I was being really drawn to were the sleeveless ones. Um, Cause I just think it's a really nice shape from the strap down. Um, so yeah, I made that. And this dress is one of the, it took me a long, long time. And I think part of that was because I French seamed all the tears and the gathers because um, my overlock is a bit on the fritz at the moment. And I didn't want to overlock. I wanted that nice clean finish of French seams. And I really just found that emotionally exhausting. So I kind of spread it out over um, over a week. And the things that I, there were a couple things that I would change. I shortened, I'm five foot two. And I shortened the middle tier skirt by one and a half inches, I believe. I think the pattern is drafted for five foot five. So I took one and a half inches off the skirt pattern um, with kind of the idea that if I did need to take any more off, I could just take it from the hem. But actually, the length is perfect. It is the absolute sweet spot length um so yeah that was perfect i would post probably next time take about half an inch off the strap so the um the straps join at a seam here so it would be a really easy one to shorten and i would take about half an inch off just because sometimes when i'm wearing it like it's not actually doing it now but sometimes like my bra kind of just peeks out there so i would i don't want to take it too high because it is a really nice length just like maybe quarter to half an inch just to really just make sure i've got that coverage the um, bodice fits perfectly. I'm glad I went with the bust size. Although, I mean, there's a bit of a gap there. So I feel like maybe I could take it in a bit here. or Maybe add a dart. But I'm not that bothered because it does still fit me really well. I feel like that was just if I was being really finicky. But I quite like the ease of movement that little gap gives me. Um, I would also probably, for the next one, I'd like to try adding boning. Whether that be something I do to all the versions or just something I try to, you know, kind of see how it is. Because I do want to make a black viscose linen version um, next when I can kind of get my my emotional energy ready to dedicate myself to a project like this again. Um, and I would quite like to try boning because I think kind of my boobs sag a bit under here. Like when I'm sat down, especially you can you can see that curve. Whereas I think boning would just give it that like really smooth corset look when I'm sat. Um, so yeah, I do. I would really like to try boning for my black linen one um, and see how that goes. But other than that, I, I don't really think there's anything else I would change. Um, yeah, it was it was all really, really nice. Um, I chose this fabric, which I want to say is 100% viscose, but I'm not... 
I'm, I got it from Rainbow Fabrics and I got it a long time ago, like when they had a remnant sale. So I got five meters of it and it might have a little bit of polyester in there. And I only say that because although it didn't melt when I was pressing it, it didn't hold its shape that well. I had to use my, um, I had to use my clapper on all the seams, like just to get that smooth press because otherwise it just kept springing back. It wasn't the easiest fabric to work with, so I will show you it here. It's got like a, um, I don't know if you can really see that. Let me cover my face, see if that shows better. I don't know if that's, um, if that's focusing. But it's got like a um, crepey kind of, is it crepe or crepe? Creep? Whatever it is, that that <laughs> that one. It's got a kind of crepey texture to it, um, and it frayed like a mother lover. So it wasn't, I, I don't, I think it would, like I said, this is, this is definitely not a beginner's project. Um, I would a hundred percent put this at intermediate. I would even say like as an advanced beginner, give it a go. I mean, I see, I still class myself as, as an advanced beginner because I've only been sewing for five years. And although I will try most things, I'm, there's still a lot I can't do. Uh, and I know this, you know, just the sheer amount of and okay so the construction wasn't that hard the instructions were fantastic it is drafted really really well um but it was a loss of gathering the french seams because it's only a three eighth of an inch seam allowance um the french seams were just an absolute nightmare with this fabric and i did end up doing um actually half an inch seams for the tiered skirts um, just to make my life a bit easier because I think like I didn't think it would affect the length too much and it didn't actually if anything I think it really helped so um yeah because I just found with this fabric where it was fraying so much you know like where it frays to the point where you kind of you're sewing on a seam but it's not a seam it's where all the thread is pulled um so sometimes I'd sew the French seam I'd open it up and then it'd just be pulling at the at the seams so I let I um I did a half an inch seam allowance I French seamed it and um, all the gathering and the hemming was really what I would say made this a more complex um, complex process. With an easier fabric, it might actually be a really enjoyable make. Like I'm looking forward to working with my viscose linen because I know that will press beautifully. Although it frays, it doesn't fray as much as this. So what I might do is I might actually um, do another video afterwards once I've done that of just like a comparing different fabrics on it. Uh, I was very, very fortunate in the fact that I didn't actually have to do any fitting on the bodice. Um, but I know some people wouldn't be as fortunate as me. Like I said, I might take a bit off the sleeves, but it's in no way impacting the fit. That's more just a personal preference for modesty. Um, it's not that I, it's something that I, if I did it again, it's like, oh, it doesn't fit. It is just something I kind of want just to hide my bra a bit more modesty. But, um, yeah, but I know that if you did require a bit more fitting because of the panelled bodice, whilst the panels do make it easier to fit, um, you might just have to do a bit of trying on and playing around. And actually, I was really, really brave for this. I didn't even, I didn't try the bodice on until it was fully lined. And as I was doing it, I was like, what's the point in this? Because even if it doesn't fit, I'm not going to have the energy to go and cut it out, re-interface and re up the bodice. So, yeah, um next time i think if i would probably be smarter and try it on before i line it but like i was very very fortunate there um so yeah it's like i said it was i think because i had a deadline and i wasn't rushing as such because i did give myself time but i did get to the point i think it was about wednesday where i still had um the placket to do and adding two panels of the skirts and buttons and that where I was getting a bit panicky because um, we were planning to come down the Friday. So I think if I'd have had more time to just take it slow, I might have enjoyed, I, I definitely would have enjoyed it a bit more. But um, no matter how much time I gave myself, I still ended up just panicking and rushing towards the end of it. And I didn't really want to um, compromise the construction. So I wasn't, I was really trying not to rush. And I think that kind of took some of the enjoyment out of it. Like I said, difficult fabric, rushing. But I think I'm going to really slow down with my next one. <clears throat> oh, sorry, my voice is going. I'm just going to have a drink. Mm. 
Yeah, so I'm going to really slow down with the next one. I'm going to take my time and I think I'm going to enjoy it a lot more. Um, and like I said, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to just trying boning just to see how it goes. But other than that, no, I think um, if you are an advanced beginner, you've sewn a, a few dresses and that and you really think you would like to, then definitely do it. I would recommend working with a, a more stable fabric. Um, so this would work, I think, really well in, it's got to be a drapey fabric, but maybe if you get like a cotton viscose, something with a bit more drape, but then also that structure, um, that would be great. I think in a viscose, it would be nice, but I know that viscose can be a bit shifty and tricky to work with, and it does fray, like this is a viscose. Um, obviously, you know, if you're confident in working with slippery fabrics, then go for it, because I think viscose is the fabric it will look best in. Um, or maybe like a drapey silk blend but um but yeah i would i would give it a go it's really really flattering it's such a pretty construction a pretty construction no that wasn't like a pretty finished finished um silhouette was what i was going for and yeah like i said i think it could have been a lot more enjoyable to make if i wasn't rushing and i mean i obviously didn't deter me too much because i do have plans to make more I don't know if I'm going to end up making the sleeved version because as much as I do like it, I am not sure it really suits my style. I mean, to be fair, I don't usually go for strapless. I do think I have quite um like sloping but broad shoulders and I'm not really a fan. Like I have a very small head. I think that's what it is. I have quite a small head and um my shoulders come quite far away from my body. So... It makes, like, usually when I wear strapless, it does make my head look smaller. And now that I'm in the camera, I am hyper aware of this. Um, but yeah, so I don't usually wear strapless, but I think the wide straps do help because it, I, actually, I don't know if they make it worse or better. I don't know. But I really like the style anyway. Um, and luckily I have hair, which helps, you know, hide my weirdly small head a little bit. Um... But yeah, so I I don't think I will make the sleeve. I mean, I might do. I might. My style is always changing. I might do. But for now, I will probably stick with just the sleeveless ones. Um. But yeah, and I um I would quite like to make one where I just do one tier. So I'd probably omit um. Oh well, I'd, I'd I'd probably like kind of match up the middle and lower. Just make it one tier, like length from the top tier. That was a really complicated way to say. It. I'm just going to omit the two the two tiers. And just keep the one tier and like lengthen the top tier down. Um, and I love the button up front. So I would probably in keep with that. And if I did make a shorter one. I might actually go with the sleeves. Because I think that would be quite a really, like, a really nice balance. Or I like shorten the sleeves and just have a short puff sleeve. So there are like loads of really fun hacking ideas that I can, I can do. I'll always do the button up front. Because without that I have to do a zip. And I have no intention of doing a zip. I hate zips. I, I can do them. I really, really hate them. And I avoid them. And the only time I'll really do them is on a zipper fly. Where if it goes messy, I've got a fly cover to cover it. On a dress like this, you've got to get it right. Especially, like, you know, where the tops meet. Because, like, at least buttons, yeah, it's, like, a lot easier to match up the top. Um, But, yeah, so that is really, you know, my review on this dress. Um. I think that's really everything I've got to say on it. Like I said, it's it's an absolutely beautiful dress. I was torn between a few fabrics, but I'm really glad I chose this um, ditzy floral because I think it looks really, really pretty and it works really well. And I am looking forward to getting wear out of this in like, well, we're in summer now, but throughout the summer. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I there was no real reason why I didn't wear it to the wedding other than... I just kind of, I just thought the the other dress I wore. So um, I didn't actually get any photos. Of, I'll put a picture of the dress that I was wearing because I've got photos from like way back when I first made it. It was the By Hand London um, sell, like draft your own tiered puff sleeve um, sheared. That's why I couldn't figure the word then. Your draft your own sheared bodice dress. Um, they have a few tutorial on it. So yeah, I did that in um, Fabric Godmother Fabric. And I just thought that like, it looked nicer for the day. Um, and actually, apparently it's really on trend because I saw like four other people in a very similar style dress to me. Well, I don't think any of them made it themselves. But I didn't, I only told anybody who asked because um, I, I'm not, I couldn't go bragging. That's really, that'd be really awkward. 
but I was still there like a bit a little bit smug in my brain but outwardly I was very like and the dresses were lovely they were wearing it's not me being like I'm better than you because I made my dress it was just more the fact that I got that little, little smug kick of yeah made it myself um <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that but yeah so apparently it was very on trend anyway so I feel like I did make the right choice um and I just feel like, yeah, this one will be a bit more... I mean, I wore it to the park today and I felt really cool and swishy. Like, when I say cool, I meant, like, temperature-wise. I know I'm not cool. <laughs> I know I'm a complete nerd and I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but, yeah, like, temperature-wise, I felt really cool. And I just thought it was a really nice one to wear out and about. And, like, maybe as a beach wear. So, yeah, um, if you've got any questions, pop them down below. I will definitely be making another one of these, if not several. Um but I won't be working to a deadline because I feel like that really did push me. And for my next project, I will probably be going a bit simpler. Um, I've got a blog project I need to be working on. Um, so Lily, oh God, sorry, that was my, um, this just fell onto my, my biscuit tin. Um, so yeah, they sent me this fabric and I'm thinking I'll just make a camisole and a pair of shorts, like, um, really comfy pyjama loungewear so I will be getting started on that soon but I but we're coming to the end of June now yeah end of June and I still haven't sewn my so fruity make so I will be doing that probably next and it's my dad's birthday on Saturday um this Saturday coming and he's asked for a shirt so I need to get that done um so yeah, I mean, I'm just probably going to sew up a couple of shirts next. I say like, you know, taking it back to basics, but I'm using cotton um, for both shirts. So actually for me, like I, I really do enjoy um, the construction of shirts. So I'll be making the Ashton top, which, you know, is just a really simple one with sleeves and it would sleeve it with short sleeves anyway. And my dad, I'll be making it a bit more complex. Um, I think I'm doing the wardrobe by me shirt, but um yeah, I really enjoy making shirts, so I'm quite looking forward to just going back and like having that those sewing projects, and then I will probably um, and then after that I'll get on with my Lily and Mimi blog. Um, oh, P is it PR? Ambassador, that's the one. Ambassador, my ambassador make. Um, but yeah, so first off, I need to tidy this, and I know you are probably very intrigued to see how messy it is. And I'm not going to show you because although I usually have very little shame in my life, I'm actually embarrassed about the state it is in. And I'm sorry, I know that is probably just making you even more curious. But you're just going to have to imagine. I will des I will describe it. Right, there's a table set up. There's fabric all over the floor. The drawers have fallen out of my chest of drawers, so they're on the floor. I have my screen printing stuff all over the table. Um, There's cut bits of... What's it called? Baking tray freezer paper, I think it's called. That's the American one. It's grease free paper all over the floor. And there's scraps of fabric where I've been cutting out projects. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So there we go. If you were curious, paint a picture with my words because I'm not showing you. So thank you so much for watching anyway. Thank you for giving me a distraction so I don't have to tidy up that mess. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you've got this dress on your plans or you're actually in the middle of sewing it, I'd love to know. Um, if you have any questions, I can't guarantee that I'm a fountain of knowledge, but I will I will answer them as best I can. And yeah, um, thank you so much for watching and I will be back with another video at some point soon. Thanks. Bye.